All right, let's break this down because what's happening here is actually huge and most people don't realize how messy this could get for Samsung. So here's the situation. Qualcomm is talking with Samsung about making Snapdragon chips on Samsung's 2 nanometer GAA process, specifically the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5 and later the Gen 6 Pro. And if this deal really happens, it could change how Samsung builds its phones and maybe even hurt Samsung's own Exynos chips. Yeah, that's the crazy part. Let's start simple. Right now, Qualcomm mostly depends on TSMC to make its best chips, and TSMC knows this, so prices keep going up. A lot. The Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5 is already rumored to cost around $280 per chip. That's insane. And the next one, the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 6 Pro? That could easily go over $300 per chip. Think about that. Every flagship phone using that chip becomes more expensive to make. That cost gets pushed to phone brands, and then to you. So Qualcomm is looking around and saying, okay, we need another factory. We need options. That's where Samsung comes in. Samsung has its own chip factory called Samsung Foundry, and they're working on 2 nanometer GAA, which is their most advanced chip tech ever. Qualcomm has already tested some samples. That's a big deal. Qualcomm doesn't test samples unless it's serious. If Qualcomm agrees to use Samsung, it wins in three ways. First, lower cost pressure. If Qualcomm doesn't rely only on TSMC, it can push back on pricing. Second, diversification. If something goes wrong at one factory, Qualcomm has a backup. Third, and this is the spicy one, power over Samsung itself. Because remember, Samsung is not just a chip maker. Samsung also makes Galaxy phones. Now, here's where things get uncomfortable. Samsung has two chip options for its flagship phones. Snapdragon, from Qualcomm, Exynos, made by Samsung. Exynos is cheaper for Samsung because it's in-house, less money goes out. But Snapdragon, Snapdragon is expensive, very expensive. Now imagine this deal happens. Qualcomm says, hey Samsung, we'll let you make Snapdragon chips in your own factory, but in return, we want most Galaxy S phones to use Snapdragon. That's not a crazy demand. Qualcomm has done similar things before. There are even reports that Samsung faces big penalties if some Galaxy models don't use Snapdragon exclusively. So what happens next? Samsung Foundry wins. More orders, more money, more prestige. But Samsung Mobile, that's where the pain starts. Because now, Samsung Mobile has to buy more Snapdragon chips instead of using cheaper Exynos chips. So Samsung is basically paying itself on one side and paying Qualcomm a lot of money on the other side. That hurts profits. It's like taking money from your left pocket but then burning money from your right pocket. And this is where Exynos gets into real trouble. If most Galaxy S phones use Snapdragon, Exynos loses, market share, real-world testing, developer trust, and consumer confidence. Exynos already struggles with image problems. People remember overheating, poor battery life, and weaker performance compared to Snapdragon. So if Samsung itself starts choosing Snapdragon more often, people will ask why does Exynos even exist? That's dangerous. Now let's talk about Samsung's 2 nanometer problem. Right now, Samsung's 2 nanometer yield is around 50%. That means half the chips made are basically useless. That's not good enough for Qualcomm. Qualcomm wants at least 70% yield, maybe more. Otherwise, costs go up, delays happen, and Qualcomm looks bad. So Samsung has to improve, fast. Yes, Samsung recently secured a massive $16.5 billion with Tesla and some Chinese crypto mining companies. That's huge. That helps Samsung's confidence. But Qualcomm is different. Qualcomm is picky, very picky. One bad generation and they walk away. So Samsung is under pressure. Improve 2 nanometer yields, keep Qualcomm happy, protect Exynos, and control costs for Galaxy phones. That's a very hard balance. And here's the big question no one's asking out loud. If Snapdragon becomes dominant in Galaxy phones, does Samsung slowly kill Exynos? Not today, not tomorrow, but over time. Because if Exynos doesn't ship in big phones, it can't improve. And if it can't improve, Samsung has no reason to keep it alive. 
So this Qualcomm Samsung deal looks like a win on the surface, but underneath, it's a power struggle, it's a money problem, and it could decide the future of Exynos. And honestly, this might be one of the most important chip decisions Samsung makes this decade.